The Trader Cobb Crypto Show, talking business in blockchain. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trader Cobb Crypto Show. Today's guest is a mate of mine that I met in Dubai a few months ago. He stood up for me, and it was a good time that we had there. It's Austin Alexander, the VP, if that's what you want to call him, of Kraken Exchange. Thanks for being with us, mate. Oh, my pleasure. Literally my pleasure. <laughs> Look, um, you know that I've been trying to get you for the last four months. You're a busy man. You're flying all around the place, and fortuitously, the news broke, I think, yesterday of your acquisition of a futures trading firm. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, mate? Yeah, so uh, uh, announced publicly yesterday, uh, Kraken has acquired Crypto Facilities. Um, crypto Facilities is a UK-based uh, FCA licensed um, futures market and uh, index provider. So with this acquisition comes... Uh, uh, multiple new kind of uh, uh, business uh, uh, verticals for Kraken and uh, so not just the futures but also the indexes and uh, this acquisition I believe makes Kraken the first um, first exchange to have both uh, fiat spot markets and uh, futures markets on the same platform. Well, mate, it's, it's been a long time coming and I've been scratching my head as to why some of the bigger exchanges like Crack and Binance, some of these big dogs that have, haven't sort of got into that. And I guess it just comes down to everything comes with time, right? It's, it's been a pretty busy period for the last four years, five years for you guys. Uh, and it's been, you know, for me, the last two years have been insane as well. So as soon as you sort of step on the treadmill here, uh, you, you just don't step off it. So good things come in time, right? Of course. And, and also futures markets are, they come with uh, added complications, yeah. uh, First and foremost, I mean, we could just discuss the regulatory complications um, that, uh, you know, I, I, as you know, in many jurisdictions, in most jurisdictions, I believe, um, derivatives are regulated uh, uh, and regulated often separately than um, spot markets and most often regulated more heavily than uh, yeah. spot markets, uh, which tends to make sense considering the um, the risks inherent both to the uh, the customer and to the, the venue as well when you're dealing with um, uh, with leverage and the need for liquidations and you had a lot of um, further complications to kind of the basic buy sell spot market mm. uh, we've already kind of in a in a way we've already traversed some of that terrain uh, because um, with our margin offering so on our spot markets uh, we offer 5x margin. Yep. Um, and uh, so, in a way, and there's also just other factors uh, to consider as well in, in kind of some of these spot markets uh, working towards futures. Um, and maybe there's some fear that the, the futures would cannibalize the existing business or, or something. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. So you said you tell you, you've taken on some other areas of business within this new acquisition indices. What indices are we talking about here? Are we talking about traditional indices, the Dow, the S&P, you know, the ES, the YM, all that sort of stuff? Or what are we talking well, about? So, yeah, so now um, uh, Crypto Facilities, the, the company that we've acquired, they are the, um, the creator, I suppose, of the uh, Bitcoin reference rate, they call it. Um, so the Bitcoin reference rate is the uh, the index which the um, CME Bitcoin futures uh, oh, settled. Off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. And that, that's that's composed of uh, four exchanges and <clears throat> a certain snapshot of, of the pricing. And it's it's, it's really interesting because I know that when I you know go through into my scan each morning with my members and all that sort of stuff, when I'm looking at the markets, often I refer to. You know, Bitcoin's our big dog, right? We don't have an index. Well, we do now, of course, but it's, it, Bitcoin has been the market's index. And if you're talking about Apple, you're talking about the S&P 500, and you're talking about the NASDAQ, obviously, right? Double listed, right? So you've got to look at this in a way for which you're like, well, hang on, what represents our market? And what we see time and time again is that when, I mean, the old saying is when the US sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. Now, when Bitcoin sneezes, the rest of the market catches a cold. Bitcoin yesterday, 
closed down. Well, it's just closed now. Probably, I can't see it right now in front of me, but about one and a half percent, something like that. Now, I've had shorts on against Ethereum Classic, which, yeah, about 1.5 percent. I've had shorts on Ethereum Classic over that same period of time, which were down over four and a half percent. So, again, you know, it shows that Bitcoin is still our ruler. It's still our biggest market cap by a fairly significant amount. And when it moves, the rest of the market moves with it. To have an index like that is more trusted, because otherwise, without that index, we're looking at either Bitfinex price, the Kraken price, the Coinbase price. What price are we looking at? Because there is some discrepancy in pricing between those two. Not as bad anymore. The ARB's kind of gone. Um, but it is good to start to see that more of a professional, trusted source coming into it, because without it, well, trust is a big issue at the moment. What are your sort of thoughts from a perspective of somebody who runs one of the largest exchanges um, around that trust issue and how we can overcome that to bring more people into the space? This is, this is serious effort. So, I mean, predominantly there is just, it's just going to take time and uh, education. And uh, I think we're going to see many more waves like we saw in 2017. And in each one of those waves, you have... Uh, more and more people who, uh, at all levels, more people who are becoming uh, introduced to the concept of Bitcoin for the first time. And then you have people who maybe they've heard of it. They're going to become more uh, uh, aware of it. They're gonna, the understanding is going to increase. And when you have something that, um, you know, you, uh, Bitcoin is very different than kind of any that's come before. It has many, it has overlaps with money. It has overlaps with uh, commodities and it overlaps with uh, other things but the fact is that it's a brand new file in people's brains and uh, you know I definitely saw especially early on or with people who are, are, are freshly introduced that the the kind of process to which they, they you know they pull out the file in their brain that says uh, stocks that says uh, currency that says uh, uh, commodity and then they kind of uh, compare it to it and and it is those it can you know you can argue that Bitcoin is currency it is a commodity and you know you, you know you could uh, wrongly argue I mean it's not a security but you could say I mean you, but the reality is you could say all those things because it's not any of those things it's something else new yeah. and uh, it's happening it's happening people are understanding more and more and more um, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure, are dis 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 disaffected, dis are, are burned from the uh, buying the top and, and having it crash down. Uh, and, uh, you know, that really is not good. But um, even throughout these cycles, through the ups and the downs, uh, mind share and kind of global understanding that Bitcoin exists mm -hmm. and the global understanding of of the, the, the dynamic uh, of the dynamics of Bitcoin and what uh, what makes Bitcoin valuable that that is just uh, that mind share is just increasing and uh, I think with that uh, you're gonna it's just going to be normalized and you know maybe it takes a generation maybe maybe it does take a generation but I can tell you that you know you go and talk to at least myself uh, go and talk to some relatives I have that are much younger and you know they're friends they get it like that, man. Yeah. I mean, you go and try to explain to them. And this, this I, can, I actually have an anecdote from like four years ago now where I was working with a, um, a couple of young kids in, in New York City. I mean, they were, I think, 18 or 17, 19, something like that. And they uh, were working on some hardware project related to Bitcoin. We'll get into it. And they needed to buy some, some kind of uh, uh, chips or something from China. I can't recall. And they were, you know, show, they were kind of, I was giving them some advice and looking at their plans and stuff. And I said, okay, well, you're going to need to um, send this big wire over to China to pay for the, for this goods. And neither of these guys had a bank account. Have, neither of these guys had ever had a bank account. And neither of these guys had ever sent a wire in their life. And this is four years ago. And so I explained to them what they're going to need to do. And they thought it was a joke. They literally were like, they couldn't believe that. The, the how contrived and uh, difficult this process was when all they had known, you know, in their short financial experience of one, two years that they yeah. had been kind of financially active, all they had known was Bitcoin and Bitcoin works. And uh, I trust you know, it. 
they trust it and it works and it's normal to them. And every day, um, you know, another uh, grandpa uh, CEO somewhere retires and some kid is uh, graduating from, up. you know, from his Ivy League uh, uh, with his Ivy League finance degree. And uh, a certain percentage of those kids these days are sending their resume to companies like Cracker. And yeah. so I just think the writing's on the wall. There's a lot of work to be done. Tremendous, uh, many, many years worth of work to be done. But uh, I am extremely optimistic. And I do not know where the price of Bitcoin is going to be in the near term. But I am, I am absolutely convinced to the core that the price of Bitcoin in the long term is going to be very, very high. Okay, well, that's not, that's not, that's not investment advice. Here. <laughs> Whatever I got to say to, there, to there's a, uh, there's a disclaimer below you. You're fine, mate. <laughs> okay. That's a very, that's a personal opinion. And look, you know what? Right, I'm, practicing I'm, as a firm is market neutral. <laughs> I, um, I, I definitely, uh, subscribe to that theory, Alston, because I mean, from, from my point of view, um, mm-hmm. Bitcoin, crypto, uh, blockchain, all of this is appealing to me. And we're throwing everything at it. And let's be honest, there's easier businesses to be involved in. Um, you know, th- this is a market f- for us, ex- especially. We're an education provider. We teach people how to trade. We empower them with education to go out there and give them a financial understanding. Because as you say, the kids coming out of school, getting into their university degrees, they don't know what's available out there to them right now. Bitcoin's the first option they've got into or crypto is the first investment they've made. A lot of people are hurting because they've made bad mistakes. Well, guess what? It's time for you to get an education. And how do we do that? Well, I promote it. I put it out there. I do this sort of stuff. Hopefully, I work with some big exchanges so we can get the word out and help people to build on this understanding because look as a long-term asset class for the belief of using this for transfers i'm with you 100 percent. but why do we have to wait around for that adoption to occur when we can actually make a really good living and change the way that we operate by something as simple as understanding the ins and outs of how a market actually works we don't need to sit back and wait we can be active and that's what we're trying to get across now coming back to you on that millennial sort of thing I think investing in millennials is a very wise decision. Uh, And here's the reason why. They're a very large demographic. They have a huge voter base. As long as they start to register to vote, uh, it would be a very powerful movement. These are the leaders of the future. What they want is what we get. And if we can continue to follow them, work with them and help them to progress and we invest in that demographic, we might have to, as as you say, there's years of work to do. But I think that it's a very sensible take to have to look at them long term. And I guess that's where you guys are at. And that's certainly where we're at. So we are in line. <laughs> Very good. Very so good. look, let's, let's touch a little bit more on, um, on volumes. I want to kick off on volumes uh, at this point um, because there's a lot of talk about volume right now. There's a lot of people saying, oh, the volumes are drying up. No one's in the market. And a lot of people are crying wolf. They're crying. The sky is falling. I mean, look, Business is so much easier to do in this market. When the market goes up, it's much more easy. But business is not meant to be easy. You have to overcome challenges. How are you guys finding the decrease in volume? Are you finding a decrease in volume? And how is it all looking from Kraken's point of view for the future? I mean, there's a de- decrease in volume over uh, you know, Q4 2017, Q1 2018. Um, However, if you were to expand your uh, uh, view, temporal uh, horizon, as they say, then you would see that volumes uh, compared to two years ago are up uh, multiple orders of magnitude, I believe. Um, yeah. Uh, volumes are very high for kind of, you know, my, I remember, uh, you know, <laughs> I remember way back in the day when the markets were so illiquid that uh, you had to watch basically every every coin that you were buying or selling. You had to you had to to be very observant of those uh, of the tops and of those books because it was just so illiquid, and um, the amount of liquidity in the in, in the Bitcoin markets now is just I mean it literally is multiple orders of magnitude higher than it was just you know maybe. 24 months or so ago, yeah. maybe it's a little bit longer. Um, so where I'm sitting, I think things, things look really good. These cycles are probably going to be a, 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 a reoccurring, uh, reoccurring thing for quite a while to come until this, uh, 
asset class matures, and uh, it's a long way to 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 maturity. Well, I think a couple of years back it was something like um, sixty million a day for the whole market. Now we're looking at five to six billion a day. Still, even after this has happened, it's come right off. The, yeah. But you know, it, it's the, difficult to see, though. I mean, just, just, oh, just discussing volumes is is um, it can get kind of frustrating sometimes because you're talking specifics, it's, yeah. It's all uh, the vast, but I, I would even venture to say that perhaps the majority of global volumes out there are fictitious or otherwise uh, corrupted in some capacity or another. There's, there's just a massive chunk of global volumes that is just straight up fake. Yep. Then there's all sorts of that. There's, then there's a spectrum in between kind of the most uh, uh, high integrity marketplaces of which ours, I would consider Kraken, you know, right on the top of that list. We, we have we, we taken extra tremendous effort to maintain the integrity of our market. Um, there are no bro deals. Uh, the fees are completely transparent from every trader, from the, the top trader to someone who has just signed up, you know, one hour ago, yep. they have a, a fixed transparent, uh, fee schedule. Um, I mean, it's volume based, so I guess it's not fixed, but it's, uh, completely transparent and, uh, Every user pays the is is trading on the same fee schedule. I'm not sure if any other exchange uh, that's the case. I there, I know that I, I think Bittrex it is the case. I, I think I'm pretty sure they are uh, uh, kind of um, how would you describe that as a uh, yeah, honest? Have honest <laughs> but they don't have any bro deals and and such. But pretty much every other exchange is either I know for a fact it's like doing what they want, right? Yeah. Um, and, or, or even if they're, you know, even some of these exchanges that like to, you know, just really uh, fly the, Oh, we're so regulated. And you know, that whole angle. Well, yeah. guess what? A lot of those are, uh, full not of illegal, uh, not illegal, but if you're, uh, if you're not stepping in the arena with, you know, uh, uh, a wedge eight yeah. figures to capitalize your, uh, crypto trading operation. Well then in these venues, you're potentially at a, at a massive disadvantage, even on these, uh, even in these venues that are claiming the, the that are flying the, the flag of we're the trustworthy regulated venues. So. It is what it is. And we're growing. That's what, like when we met in Dubai, one of the things that I liked about what you were saying is that, and, and you're like, I, I take you as, as an honest person. Um, like, your actions speak louder than your words and your words speak loud as well when you want them to. Uh, I'm referring to, uh, uh, Austin and I had a, a, what they call it, a fireside chat. And um, never have I seen somebody step up and throw down uh, to somebody who really needed it to happen, uh, as I did with you, mate. (laughs) So, again, integrity in spades. Maybe you, uh, I, I haven't seen any, uh, if you have a video of that or something. I haven't, yeah, seen, I, I haven't seen it either. It's uh, it cool. impossibly difficult to get anything out of that mob. But well, anyway. basically, I guess I could tell the audience that uh, there was some, I think she, maybe she was a reporter. I think I, she, she was yeah. doing an ICO, remember? Yeah, no, I hear ICO. I think I automatically forget. Uh, they, I, uh, yeah, so she asked you, uh, or she basically didn't ask. She she maybe she framed it in the question, but she was utilizing her uh, uh, time allotted to uh, smash you, attempting to smash you for uh, having the audacity to uh, offer a uh, trading course for uh, for consideration for for payment. I mean, uh, I guess she thinks that you should um, uh, sacrifice yourself and be a. Uh, uh, I don't know. It, 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 the whole thing was a little weird. I mean, she, she wouldn't let me answer. Either. She, she, yeah, she yeah. wouldn't let me answer. She's saying, oh, it's not fair that you don't give out this information for free. And she, you know, say, well, yeah, anyway. It was funny. As I loved it. You, you absolutely took her down. I sat back and just watched in awe of the performance from both of you. It was, it was very entertaining. Uh, <laughs> but um, it was, again, it, it, just, it just speaks volumes. I mean, the thing is that when you've got an individual that is involved in a business, if that individual is somewhat easy to sway, uh, you know, they can be bent very quickly, then it tends to happen within the organization. Uh, I, I, you know, watching you, speaking with you, um, and your involvement with Kraken, it's pretty clear that your, your ideals, your morals, and your 
life thesis, I suppose, is in very much in line with the uh, with the culture of what the exchange is trying to do, and that just sort of supports your theory of uh, about the honesty and everybody having the same sort of fee. So that that goes a very very long way. It's good for me. It's good for other people. It is good for the industry. We need to see more of it now. Before we crack off because we don't want to go too long uh, i want you to tell us a bit about the order systems because we're always talking about what we want i want to know where you're at and i want to know if we can help you to get you what you need so sure. tell us a little bit about um the way kraken works the sorts of order types you've got and um you know how it all goes together really you can show us too so if you're listening on the podcast austin might show a screen you can go to the youtube page and you can watch it there or Austin will also be very descriptive in the way that he explains it, won't you, Austin? Yes, I'll do my best. Uh, I appreciate your compliments and uh, just make sure I have no identifying information here. All right, I'm going to uh, uh, share, just the uh, screen share, the, the basic uh, Kraken homepage once you're logged into the account. So here it is. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, here we are at the, the, uh, standard Kraken homepage. I'm showing, uh, my account balances, um, totaling 87 cents. Uh, <laughs> so now we're going to head over to the, uh, new order page. So we have three, we have four, uh, separate order interface screens here. So as you see, there's a simple screen, which is just a buy and sell button. You have the uh, uh, Bitcoin volume, and you have the price. You can do market or limit, and you can fill in any of these variables, and it'll auto fill the rest of the uh, the variables for you. And that's about as simple as it gets. Yep. Um, we have then intermediate and advanced. I'll skip over intermediate because it's uh, contains everything that advanced does and advanced contains even more. So you're going to see that when we switch to the advanced order screen, the um, most important, I would say uh, difference is in the leverage offering over here on your right. So you can see that um, as we fill out this order, we can choose between two, three, four and five X leverage. So it's important to understand. I'm sure most of your users understand this, but uh, just to uh, make it clear, that uh, when you press that button, um, you are, you're trading on the spot market, but you're no longer trading spot. You're basically going to open a position. Um, so in that, once you open the position, you need to be very mindful of your uh, uh, account equity. Um, and uh, you, you should your, you can see I've done a little one, two cent trades here. And so this is the kind of closed position screen. Uh, maybe I'll order, I'll, I'll open a position for 10 cents or so. So does it tell you on here? Okay, so what I want to know is, will it tell me, if, if I go too big on a trade, is it going to tell me that I haven't got the, uh, the amount to take that trade? And if I'm getting close to that margin call, will it tell me what I'm getting close to? So basically, can I- Yeah, so you have in this position uh, screen, I believe, or no, it's right here actually in the overview. You're going to see here under my uh, position valuation, yep. right? You're going to see a number of things. You see in both the balances and position valuation. You're going to see used margin. Uh, you're going to see free margin. You're going to see equity. You're going to see margin level. Um, I believe, so when your margin level drops to 40%, uh, that is when you're going to be margin call. The margin call on the platform consists of uh, uh, essentially an email warning you of your uh, diminishing equity in your account. Um, you know, these have changed. Uh, so yeah, don't quote me on it. I would say before you go and trade, look at the terms of service and the support guide and make sure that Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> what I'm saying are the accurate percentages and numbers because and start uh, small guys start small. Yeah. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, be very, very, very careful when you're trading margin because, um, you know, you can uh, lose it all very quickly. <laughs> uh, so basically then at 20%, your position will be force liquidated. Um, another important thing to note is that, um, so it's a 20% fee on, on margin call, right? Come again? So it's a 20% premium for a margin call. Um, 
that that's when so so the forced liquidation is going to uh, uh, basically close out your order at market. Um, so in ter certain market conditions, that can be pretty risky. Um, when when your account equity hits, uh, when your margin level hits twenty percent, uh, that's when it's going to be margin called. Um, there's no, uh, I mean, it might be a semantic thing, uh, but I there's no like actual kind of fee or penalty. Right. So it's another twenty percent will automatically just shut you out. That's yeah, it. and if, if if you can close the position and some uh, equity still remains, you'll. It's not that your 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 account balance would be completely wiped. Yep. There's chance that it will be completely wiped, right? And there's also a chance that should the market conditions be uh, extremely uh, preferable to your position, let's say that you you know you take a position and it goes the opposite direction, hard, fast, and the bottom falls out. There's some uh, you know, some sort of uh, massive FUD or who knows yep. and it's possible that your position may close and we do our the best we can to avoid this. Obviously our system is engineered to as and the reason why our kind of margin requirements are so high is because we want to avoid this, but it is possible that you may end up owing funds to the platform. Not only will your entire balance be wiped out, but you'll still owe money. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, and guys, this is standard. This is, this is not exclusive to Kraken. This is standard practice. Uh, I know some exchanges don't do it, but it is, if you go to any uh, brokerage outside of crypto, because I know a lot of people don't understand this, it's, it's a new area for them. This is all standard practice. This is not, oh, geez, that can happen. No, no, no. This is the way the world works. This is the way derivatives exchanges work. This is the way, they, if you're buying a stock outright, you can't lose more than what you got, right? Because there's no margin. If you're using margin, then you can. And that's why it's so important to educate yourself on what you're doing, how to manage your risk, and also the margin calls, what levels, what potential, how big is your trade, you know? Jumping in there and trying to go, you know, too heavy, it can not only wipe out what you've got in the account, but it can also wipe out what you don't have in the account. So just be careful. This is why I recommend for, I mean, for a long time. I mean, until you, until you really are at the level where you believe that uh, you're ready to kind of compete with the pros and the semi pros, uh, it's much safer to trade spot and, um, you know, trade spot, you, you're not, you're never going to be forced liquidated. You're never going to, uh, have your, I mean, you might have the value of your assets might go to zero. Should you be holding some sort of, uh, I don't know, exotic shit coin, but <laughs> your, uh, uh, you're not going to be, uh, in debt. Yeah, and you're definitely not going to be in debt. Yeah, yeah. So you won't be in debt to crack in. Let's hope, let's yeah, hope you're yeah. not uh, taking out loans to buy. Yeah, the local down the road who rides a motorbike and is covered in tattoos with a bald head. Don't get in debt with him. I don't have tattoos or a motorbike, so you're safe with me. <laughs> but um, well, Let's take a look, um, if I can, to uh, show you uh, our pro interface. Yep. So this is uh, trade.kraken.com. This is what we call Kraken Pro. Um, this is based on the crypto watch, uh, uh, trading interface. So yep. crypto watch is another Kraken owned property. Um, I believe it's the number one kind of, uh, uh, chart or, or one of the primary, I shouldn't say number one, but, um, one of the primary, uh, charting resources for, yep. uh, the crypto world. And so here you see, you have a, a, a very different interface. Um, you have, uh, and you can move all this around, right, to, to make it how you want it, right? Or customize. Yeah, um, this is this has been this is very actively worked on. I mean, we have a ton of developers working on this. They're dropping improvements like constantly. I think literally every week. Um, through, and, and and this interface is shared between Crypto Watch and uh, Kraken Pro. So with Crypto Watch, you can. Uh, Create an account on Crypto Watch and trade not only Kraken uh, through the platform, but six other exchanges as well uh, by utilizing your API keys. Um, so I encourage uh, you know anybody out there who has never taken a look to give. I want to go a look for sure. Um, and basically, this is uh, very uh, similar to the trading screen you're going to see on Crypto Watch, but this is kind of exclusive to Kraken. Uh, so you see on the right, most importantly, we have our trading interface. We have buy sell. We have our leverage option here. We have our order types. 
So we have uh, market and limit, obviously. Um, we have settle position. Uh, stay, stop loss and take profit. So settle position is interesting. Let's say that you're taking out a, um, a uh, you're going long on Bitcoin, and which would mean that you're going to owe US dollars to, or you're, you're long on Bitcoin dollar, let's say. Yeah. You're going to owe US dollars to the platform. And uh, there's two ways you can pay back that, uh, that debt. You can either obviously trade your position out, right? You can close your position by trading it on the order books in the inverse, or you can deposit or otherwise utilize a US dollar balance in your account to settle that position. So let's say that one Bitcoin is trading at $3,000 and you take a long at $3,000 for one Bitcoin, you're going to owe the platform $3,000. Should the price of Bitcoin go up, you can sell that Bitcoin. Let's say the price of Bitcoin goes up to $4,000. You get the thousand uh, in the middle. Exactly. So you still owe Kraken $3,000. You sell one Bitcoin for $4,000. You send 3,000 back to Kraken and it were made whole and you get to keep the thousand dollar profit. Alternatively, you could uh, wire in $4,000 or $3,000 to the exchange and use this order type, settle position, and settle the position. Does and what, what Austin's explaining here, on the, for those that are on podcast, it basically, I mean, to, to make it usable for you guys, there's, you've got your charts, you've got your order book, like your, your, uh, your deal flow, uh, you know, looking at the buy and sell orders. And then you've basically got trading off of those charts. So imagine using trading view, but being able to trade off of that right there. So you know, two back and forth, really handy if you're only trading from one screen. I've got four here, uh, three of which are used. So it's, it, you know, for somebody who's got a singular screen, it's really easy because what you don't want to do is make mistakes. And what this allows is for uh, less likelihood of making mistakes, switching between this and the other and one chart to your exchange and back and forth and back and forth. So, it's a really, really, really good function. I will be checking it out um, for sure. And, uh, this also yeah. contains a, a ton of advanced tools that um, I don't have the time to get into. But no, that's here. okay. Look, everybody, anyone awesome. who knows, the, the main thing is people should go and have a look at this. It's, um, I'm going to do the same. I'm impressed by what I've seen thus far. Uh, of course, you know, being that, uh, you know, we haven't seen each other heaps, mate, but I trust you and I like what you do. And, uh, I've, you know, I've, I've been wanting, meaning to get more involved with the Kraken platform since you told me a bunch of the features when we were in Dubai. I just haven't got around to it until today. So I'll definitely be going through and having a look at it. And I look forward to uh, maybe going through and doing a full run through uh, maybe in a month or two and, you know, putting something out there uh, whereby we can walk people through the whole experience and just show them exactly how to do it in a very interactive video type thing where we can walk through it all. What do you say to that? That would be wonderful, actually. Yeah. Um, Excellent. Excellent. I think, I think it'd be beneficial for us all, uh, and it might be a resource that you guys might want to put out and use as well. Who knows? But either way, Austin, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for taking the time out. I know you're busy. It's the first time you've probably not been on a flight for I don't know how long. Um, so we finally got you, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Wish you all the best of luck with the new acquisitions, and hopefully these futures become something that we all use more often because futures and derivatives that are trusted is what institutions want to see. It's what I want to see, and it can help progress this marketplace. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, and uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Right, guys, you have a great day, evening, wherever you are in the world, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye for now. The Trader Cobb Crypto Show, talking business in blockchain.